Okay, so what I was just using there was artificial harmonics. And this is another interesting playing technique that you can uh, incorporate in your playing. Now these are very distinct to the harmonics that occur naturally on the string. Let me just show you the difference. Harmonics occur at certain points along each string. And the strong ones we can find located at the 12th, the 9th, 7th, 5th, 4th, just before the 3rd, and then here there's a couple between the 3rd and the 2nd, and then we start getting into the real bat territory up here. Now, these are useful to use, and we're going to spend a little time in another section on just how to tune your bass using harmonics. But in the meantime, I want to actually talk about generating harmonics by using this hand to actually create your own separate bridge using your fingers. Now what we're doing is, see, when you get a harmonic occurring, it's because you're dividing the string up fractionally along its length. When you divide it exactly halfway, you get an octave. You get, i.e., a note one octave higher than the open string. So here's your G. Then halfway along the string is the 12th fret. We get a G here, which actually corresponds to the fretted G. Now, this doesn't always work that way. In other places, harmonics occur and the fretted note doesn't match the harmonic. For instance, if we divide this string from the 12th halfway along here, we get another G two octaves above, but the fretted note is actually a C. So you have to learn the harmonics independent of the fretted notes. Now, obviously, the cool thing about using harmonics is if they fit the key of the song or tune that you're playing, they're very cool to throw in. Say you're in E minor. It'd be nice to throw that in. But let's say you're in F minor, well, suddenly you're out of luck. But through the use of artificial harmonics, you can still incorporate this technique. And what you're doing is with your, fr with your plucking hand, you're actually generating a note and you're trying to find a point ex exactly 12 frets above where you're playing to get an octave. So I know up here on this bass, here's an E. So the next note up here, actually the last fret on the A string is an F. So I'm playing an F here. So if I play, you can hear I get a note ringing out and that's the harmonic, which actually corresponds to the fretted note there. So I could, let's say I'm playing a chord here, like F minor seven. I can play it in harmonics if I pluck exactly above that, so the same shape, but one octave higher. So all the notes correspond up here, F, A flat, E flat, F, A flat, E flat, and I'm gonna pluck them like this, watch this. You can see that sounds really sweet. And what I'm doing is I'm placing my thumb, the very tip of the thumb, over the note that corresponds with the one on my fretting hand. So I'm playing an F here, so the tip of my thumb is just resting on the string. I'm not fretting the note though. I really want to emphasize that. I'm not pushing the string down on onto the fingerboard like that. I'm just letting it lightly rest on the string in much the same way as I would generate a natural harmonic by just resting on the string and playing it. Because if I fret it, I get the fretted note. I'm just resting it on the string. So here's our F. So now I'm just resting it on the string exactly one octave higher on the F. And you'll notice that my index finger is behind it and I'm plucking with that finger. Some people do it like this with their second finger or even their third. Whatever you find easiest. I just personally find first finger is loudest and strongest for me so I can play stuff here and it, it pops out. Again, I'm playing a shape here. I'm mirroring exactly where it is. Now, check this out. I'm actually playing an E, a C, and an E on the top here, this sound. Now you'll notice that on certain bases like this one, we run out of fingerboard. And so the C here would actually be around here. So I'm just guesstimating where the C is, would be here. And you can hear, it generates the sound. There's the C, well, I'm out of, there, but 
can be back there. Now, if I get a little off, there's some latitude to that, you see? I can play along here and it's still there. As I move away, though, it does start to disappear. But then we get into the range of overtones. We get to like the fifth and so on. It's very cool, this. So what you can do is experiment with that. First of all, trying to mirror the actual note you're playing. Then find some of the overtones because they can be cool to incorporate. So once more, look, I'm plucking. I'm playing an E, a C, and an E above there. So I'm going, here's my E there. Touch the thumb on the string. My C is going to be roughly here. E's going to be here. It's quite nice to drop in a low open string there too, so it's really effective. See? And there's a really nice kind of sense of like that bell-like chime, and then the richness of the low string underneath it, just sitting there like that as a foundation. E major seven. E major seven with artificial harmonics. F minor seven. F minor seven with artificial harmonics. B minor nine. B minor nine with artificial harmonics. So those are artificial harmonics and if any of you are familiar with Jacob Astorius and Weather Report, there's a famous tune that, that that band played on an album called Heavy Weather called Birdland, and Jaco really pioneered the use of artificial harmonics with the line there. And there he's playing. But instead he's playing in harmonics. You can see that's really effective. You're just getting like the octave where you can go two octaves above where you're actually playing it on the fretted note. Now, the other way to use artificial harmonics um, is a little kind of wilder example. And, and this is something I, I quite like to throw in sometimes. And that's where you're really not trying to always get exactly the octave above the fretted note. You might want a kind of random crazy sounding note. So often if I'm playing on the lower strings, I might just incorporate. Almost sounds like you've got like a ring modulator, some sort of crazy effects pedal on that. But all I'm doing is getting the sounds out of my hand. And again, I'm just finding areas on the string where I get some sort of harmonic overtone. And it, now I start off playing a G, a G sharp or an A flat here. So I could try and get. I can find all these overtones. Here's my, here's my A flat. But to me, that doesn't sound right for this line. So a little dull. And there it is again. See, I found the fifth and then the octave, you see? But then if we go back here towards the bridge, we get the fifth and then the octave above again and kind of some little, and then we start getting some little overtones that are gonna sound much more interesting when we go. see it can be really cool and that's a little more kind of wilder sound as well and like I said it, the great thing about that is this is all coming from your hands not from an array of pedals on the floor so 
it's really nice to be able to conjure this many tones out of the instrument before you even add effects. So once you start doing that, imagine you're able to generate all this just from the instrument and then you start adding effects pedals and that's a whole other chapter.